So about eight months ago, I bought this little diesel engine off of eBay. It's about 250 bucks, but I just thought it was neat. It's just a such a small little engine and been kind of waiting around, uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with it. And I decided finally to put it on the old Murray here. Right now I've got a Predator 212 on it. Uh, it's got a torque converter that came with the cart. Uh, I bought this go-kart for about 25 bucks from one of my neighbors and got it going. But there's something wrong with this Predator. It just, it'll run, but it's just never run completely right. So replaced the carburetor on it, tinkered with it a whole bunch and it's just still never right. So I decided to put this diesel on it and see what we can get into. Now, one issue with this diesel engine is it has a 20 millimeter output shaft and most of the clutches and stuff you find here in America is 19 millimeter. So what I'm planning on doing is getting this thing cranked up and I'm gonna take some sandpaper and we're gonna file down that output shaft about a millimeter. You know, I thought about a couple of different options like getting a sleeve to adapt this to a one inch output shaft and just find some one inch clutches and stuff. But in the long run, I decided it'd just be easier to file that output shaft down so I could fit the torque converter on it and you know would have easier time finding clutches for it also everything on here is in Chinese or some sort of foreign writing and the and the instruction manual was the same way so I don't know how much oil this thing takes I don't know how much power it's supposed to make I don't know anything about it now when I first got it it wouldn't even turn over. I thought the engine came locked up. It, you couldn't pull the handle or anything. So I just thought it was a piece of junk. Well, there is a, and I, I knew there was a decompression switch here. i let you pull it. Otherwise, you can't pull it. But that wasn't even working. Well, turned out in shipping, the flywheel cover here had been crushed a little bit. It, it didn't look like it from the outside but the flywheel was hitting on the cover here. So I took the cover off and once I took the cover off and could see the backside, I could definitely tell that it had been smashed some. So push that back out and now it turns over fine as long as we got the decompression lever pressed there. And you know, it's not surprising that it got damaged in shipping because it came in a cardboard box with literally no packing other than a half an inch of styrofoam on the bottom and a half an inch of styrofoam on the top. Nothing on the sides, nothing else. So I'm actually surprised it's in the shape it is. Now, another thing that I need to figure out is how I'm gonna be able to stop this thing. So, you know, normally on these go-karts, I always wire up a kill switch and with a gas engine, you can do that and it'll cut spark. But this thing, you know, these don't have spark plugs so i'm not quite sure how we're going to get it to stop and you know this go-kart has brakes but they don't work very well so i'm gonna have to figure that one out but i'm gonna get this predator off and we're gonna get this thing on and file and sand down this output shaft Just right off the bat, it looks like I'm gonna have to add a few spacers under the engine there, or a few washers, just to make sure that this line here doesn't hit the torque converter. I was happy to find that this has a couple bolt patterns and the far side and the middle one there are the same bolt pattern as a regular engine that I, as an engine I might normally use, which was something I was thinking could be an issue since the output shaft was a different size than what you normally see, but looks like it's gonna bolt up real easy. Engine's bolted up, no oil or fuel in it yet, but I did find 
I did find one little bit of good news. There's actually some English on it. We got a max and a min on the old dipstick. So at least I know how much old to put in it now. And then what we'll do is we'll get it cranked up and I'll sand down the output shaft here. All right, so since I can't read any of the instructions, really don't know what weight all of this is supposed to take, but just got some Motocraft 10W30. So let's hope that does the trick. This is why it's good to try to research stuff before you actually start effing with it, but you know, there's not a ton of information on this engine, but it looks like, you know, it's running with starter fluid, so we're not getting fuel. Um, we're supposed to bleed the fuel here, so I'm going to loosen it up a little bit and then pull the pull start and get some fuel flowing in there. Uh, also figured out I can shut the engine down by pulling down the compression release and that's also how you crank it you have to push the compression release down and then pull it but that thing is tough to pull or this can be turned off by putting the throttle control all the way up here so I'm just going to have to figure out how I want to shut this thing down because it's going to be used on a go-kart it's not like I can easily just you know leave it on one speed setting and go if I want this thing to ever idle we're not going to be able to you know stop it this way but I might possibly see if I can wire up or if I, I might see if I can make some type of lever to trigger the compression release in case this thing starts running away on me. All right, so I've been messing with this thing for quite a while now, trying to get to prime the fuel. I took this off and, you know, I was getting fuel there when I removed all the internals, but I couldn't figure out why when I screwed it back in that I couldn't get any fuel. So one of the issues was, because I'd also taken this off here, and this bolt has two holes in it, and then it empties out into the center. But if those holes aren't lined up with the little banjo fitting here, the fuel can't pass in down into the injector here. So I uh, made a little mark with my file so I know where the holes are, make sure I line that up. I don't think that was the issue uh, from the start, but I did take that loose and it was potentially an issue later on. But, uh, you know, I knew I was getting fuel all the way down here, so that's not definitely not the issue now. But, you know, I couldn't get any fuel to pass out of here, so I knew this, but I forgot about it. The way you turn this thing off is by putting the throttle all the way up. Well, throttle was all the way up the whole time I was trying to prime it. So I took it back off the, I took the engine back off the go-kart so I could take it apart. And the whole time it was just because it was turned off. So now we're gonna make sure we leave it on. And we're gonna finish priming the line 
Make sure we get fuel. All the way up here and you see us dripping out. So we got our fuel. Let's tighten that back down. And now we should be ready to get the exhaust back on this thing and crank it up. All right, let's try this again. We got the fuel prime now and we'll see if we can get it to work. I had this thing on its side a little bit, so we might uh, might, uh, sm might smoke a little bit. So we're going to try to sand down the output shaft here. So finally got the output shaft filed down here. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Files really weren't working out so hot. I ended up having to use my angle grinder to get a good part of it off and then use the sandpaper to get it back smooth and uniform. But we got that millimeter off and as you can see, our backing plate for our torque converter fits now and now it'll accept any standard three-quarter clutch or ebay torque converter depending on what i want to do with it 